Okay, so we learned in the last uh, demo, in the last demo video, how to cut shapes out of other shapes, right? So that's how we'll cut out the eye and the nostril here, you know, out of this shape. Um, but we created these shapes on this new design of the logo just with the pen tool. And we've seen where the pen tool can be really useful because once you use it, you can hold down command, you can get to the small selection tool, and you can really tweak everything and just kind of perfect it. And get things exactly where you want them with minimal anchor points so it's easy to control. But sometimes you want to make a shape in a more um, intuitive way. You know, if you're used to just inking and drawing, the pen tool is a very art, very odd kind of old uh, way to interact with it, even though it's very exact. So it's good for making corrections, but I don't always feel like it's the best for putting the shapes down, especially because you tend to have to make something and then go correct it. So is there a way that we could just draw directly and cut out these shapes like scissors. And there is, there is a tool in Illustrator I just love called the pencil tool. So we are going to look at the pencil tool next. So you will find it well below the pen tool. It's actually below the paintbrush, which we'll get to later. And it's not the default tool. There's a new tool called the shaper tool that's at the top. We wanna to go to the pencil tool. The shortcut for it, if you're in the pen tool, is just N. If you hit N on your keyboard, you will get right to the pencil. And to get back to the pen, the shortcut is P. So between, between P and N, these are the tools I use most in Illustrator. So now with the pencil tool, we're not just gonna use it in its default setting. Let me make sure my tablet's plugged in. All right, because it worked great with the tablet. In its default setting, it will make shapes. Right? But we want to see how it's deciding how to make the shape. So if you double click on the tool, we get these pencil options. And these are incredibly important. So what we want to do is we want to set it, we want to play with how accurate it is versus how smooth it is. And this setting right here is where I do most of my logo design. Not so smooth that everything is turned into a perfect curve, but not so accurate that it's capturing more anchor points that I need. So let's go to all the way smooth and see what that does. And then I'm going to simply draw this ear with my tablet and I'm gonna make sure I close it off, right? Then I'm gonna fill it with black. And you can see it did a pretty good job for that ear. Pretty smooth, it might have an extra anchor point. I can hit uh, the minus key, and that will immediately get me to delete anchor point. And I can try getting rid of it, and I can hold down option. or I'm sorry, P tool, and then command, right? And I can get back to these anchors and then I can adjust it. But the problem is, it's all a little different. So I think that actually did a pretty good job with the pencil tool just on its own. I'm happy with that. So let's try it on this more complicated shape. Start here. You have to be fairly confident, fairly smooth. Of course, you can alter it once you've done it. But this is a complex shape, right? It's hard for me to know how many anchor points I would need with my pen tool between all these curves. But the pencil tool will kind of make it for me. Okay, and then I fill it in. It did a decent job. It took out some of my hard edges. So then I go back in with the pen tool, hit P, and I might add an anchor. Right, and then I might hold down command and I might drag that anchor down and in and sharpen it up. Let 
I'm going to pull this handle back. Or maybe not. I can turn this path off. See, where else do I want it sharpened up? I can even just take that path and go to transparency. Remember that? And go down to 50%. And then see, where do I need to change it? So I'm going to hold down the anchor, pull it back and in. Pull these down. Pull this in. Maybe just delete it completely. Pull down Command. Huh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm on the wrong tool. Play with this curve. So on and so forth. Right. Tighten that one up, move it out. Tighten this one up. Tighten this one up. So the pencil tool gets me there a little bit faster if it's a complex shape. This I want to be a little bit more squared off. Now, honestly, the pencil tool smoothed it a little bit more than I wanted it to. So you notice like at the edge here where I have these nice sharp edges in my sketch, the pencil tool at all the way smooth just rounded them out. So that's over smoothing. So if I double click on the pencil tool and I back it away, I can actually redraw it. If I start on the path, this is why it's my favorite tool, and I end on the path, it's like magic scissors that will redraw it for me. Until I'm happier with it. So where it's flatter, I want to make it flatter. And this is all without the pen tool. But you have to make sure you start and stop on the path, usually going through anchor points. Otherwise, it will just create a new path for you. There we go, that's closer. Okay, then there's a tool that goes along with the pencil tool. And it's underneath it, it's called the smooth tool. So for instance, over here, it got a little wonky and wavy. So if I just use the smooth tool and just draw over it, it will even out those anchor points. Like there it worked well. Let's see if I can get it to work here. And there it worked well. Until it's to the point where you want it. But don't overuse it because it makes everything look like wet macaroni. Okay, now, before I turn the transparency back up to 100%, I'm going to make some new shapes. But for this eye, instead of trying to draw a perfect circle, which is pretty possible with the pen tool, I'm going to use the shape tools. I'm going to go to the ellipse. I'm going to hold down shift. And I'm going to just draw a perfect circle. right? And then for the nostril here, I'm going to draw a perfect ellipse. and move it with the arrow keys into place. But for the nostril, I'm just going to draw it with that pencil tool. All right, and then fill it in with black. So now I've got this path, this path, this path, and this path, right? I'm going to take this path of the head back to 100%. And I'm going to cut them out from each other. So first I have to select them all. And then I go to Pathfinder and I exclude. And now I have the cutout. How's this looking? So far so good. I even kind of like the blob above the head. It's like a little tongue of fire. I don't need it. All right. So let's keep going. Now this is a crazy shape, and I could do it with a pen tool, but let's see if the pencil tool will do the job for me. I 
and I do have to close the path. But remember, I can re-edit it. I can re-cut my pencil tool like magic scissors. So I fill it in. How does that look? Looks okay. It's very flourishy. Okay, let's do the ribs. Decide to extend them a little bit more. It's helping to smooth it for me. So there's no tool in Photoshop that helps you smooth out your strokes. And this is why it's called Illustrator. It kind of cleans things up for you as you go. See how that looks? Pretty good. So just this pencil tool is working out pretty well for me, but I have it at the settings that make sense. And I'm using it with a tablet. Okay, I messed up at the bottom there. So let me redraw that bottom. Flatten that out. Whoops. I know it's hard to see with the yellow. Maybe I'll switch to a new ah, layer path. So I want to flatten out this bottom. So I have to draw through the anchor points. Ah, I keep missing it. Draw through the anchor points to re-cut it out like magic scissors. There we go. If I want it sharper, I need to make it sharper. And then I can use the large selection tool and just stretch it a little bit, should I need to. And rotate it. All these little shifts that can sometimes help. Squeeze it. Rotate it. You can use the arrow keys to kind of nudge it into place. So how's that looking? Yeah, that reads pretty well. That negative space echoes that negative space. I probably don't want to get any thinner than that, or it won't scale down well. Remember, we always want to make sure they scale down. Oh, good time to save. Command S. Now, because I'm getting a little sick of the yellow anchor points, I'm just going to go ahead and select all of them. Copy, Command C, lock, turn it off, make a new layer. Go to Edit, Paste in Place. <laughs> and now this will be gray anchor points. So I'll continue building here. And what else do I need the pencil tool for? I think the hooves, the tail for sure. Anything that's fairly complex. For the arms and legs, I might just use the pen tool. They're a little bit more straightforward. But for these more complex shapes, that pencil tool works, works wonders. Uh, the hoof got a little little wonky there. Let's see if I can make it straighter. Yep, good. I can tighten it up here. Almost have to end, start and stop on the path. There we go, perfect. Now I have that. Why can't I just do copy paste? Then use the large selection tool to move that and use that exact same shape over here. Kind of like we did in creature design, right? Internal compositing. But it doesn't mean it always needs to work, right? So maybe I use my small selection tool and I pull out this anchor just a little bit deeper. Customize it a little bit. And then let's flatten this bottom by pushing these curves in, these bezier handles. So it's just flat. 